KUAM Sports is brought to you by Docomo Pacific. Better together. All right, your sports report is coming at you, and I am joined once again in the KUM News Zoom Room by a very, very accomplished member of our island sports community, both as a player and now as a uh, coach and an administrator, the one and only EJ Calvo, the uh, man behind the Team Guam National Men's Program. Coach, good to see you as always, man. Yeah, thanks, Jason. Happy to be here. Okay, and you are now putting together a wonderful opportunity for other people that want to uh, get into the profession that you're in now or find even greater success for existing coaches or, you know, even parents that want to uh, set their, their young athletes and their households up for success with a proper coaches clinic. So let's talk about that. Yeah. It's always been one of our missions with Guam basketball to share as much information as possible and, and just help um, groom future coaches on Guam. Uh, not, we don't get a chance to work with everyone uh, in our junior national program uh, that we'd like to. And, uh, everyone's got busy schedules, also coaching other teams. So this was an opportunity we felt to uh, gather as many coaches together as possible and and really share uh, things that have helped us be successful. And also uh, a lot of content that has been provided to our Guam National Program from international sources, from FIBA and other sources that they've in introduced to us uh, that's really helped our program. So um, it's really about sharing content, sharing information, and also uh, just conducting an exercise where we can talk about um, the art of coaching and the, uh, the, uh, the state of basketball on the island of Guam and how we can improve things. Absolutely. And that's so wonderful that you would actually like, you know, not hoard this information, but basically say, this is what's worked for us. This is maybe some of the potholes that we were able to, you know, either make it through or avoid. And this is also what we've been able to learn from all of our international um, experience and everything to build as, you know, I think this is the point because for more than a decade now, you've not just been able to put, you know, a team of 12, you know, rock solid players together and win a single tournament. You've actually been able to build a framework and a pipeline that, it, that has had success breed success for a very long time now. And that's the key, Jason, is uh, uh, longevity, right? And, and just to be able to be consistent. And, um, you know, I'd like to say that even uh, during my playing days and before me, uh, we've had success in the sport of basketball uh, in different ways. We've had talented athletes. Uh, but what our goal has been is to, you know, become more consistent and create a style of play that can be passed on and we can keep building on as a as a national program. So a lot of that we'll be talking about with the coaches from the youth level and just developing the fundamentals that are needed. Because if you don't have the right fundamentals and foundation, it's hard to really get uh, to new heights. Uh, mm -hmm. People always skip fundamentals and go straight for the highlight films uh, or the highlight uh, plays. And we really would like, even at the high school level, to take a step back with coaches and re-emphasize fundamentals and the um, uh, thinking the game through the right way, uh, because what we've seen as players come out of uh, you know middle school and then out of high school to our program, uh, that we have to almost revert back and improve on a lot of uh, uh, simple um, areas of the game that really should be um, honed at the junior national level or at the youth level, but. You know, it's 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 difficult thing to do as a coach because, uh, you know, with information the way it is today, uh, young athletes are always looking at uh, the best in the world. They're always looking at all the highlights and and exciting plays that are being made all around the world. And and with that comes all kinds of uh, different ways of of learning the game that um, they may not be taught the right way to implement it, to make it actual uh uh, functional in the in the game, especially in their game, because uh, every player is different. So that's some of the things we want to focus on and and help coaches uh, overcome those obstacles, because we are also coaches working to overcome those obstacles with our players. And, you know, so, with, with your particular responsibilities and in, in charge of the Team Guam men's program, you've probably got, you know, the most jobs on your shoulders, like of of any coach within basketball, because you're thinking about, you know, about nutrition and diet and and scheduling and you know managing personalities and again you know yeah. uh, taking the current uh, senior level program and making sure that you know like uh, the younger players are coming up like at the right pace and everything. So what message do you have for for like you said like uh, like other coaches about you know 
uh, managing progression and, you know, making sure that, you know, your team is, uh, is accelerating at the right pace that's appropriate for them. Yeah. Well, well, what's going to be interesting is, um, my experience coaching, a, a men's national team or, you know, and with our, our women's national program, the same, um, it's very different because you'll get players of different, um, you say somewhat different skill levels, but also from different generations. And so it's not like coaching a school team where everyone pretty much went to school together and uh, continues to go to school together and 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 hangs out. Um, you have very different personalities. So what we talk a lot about is building a culture that we all uh, can 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 buy into uh, in our program. And I think it's way more challenging when you have a program of such diverse players. Um, but um, there's a lot of uh, ways that you can cultivate that culture so that everyone's on the same page and approaches the game uh, with a common goal. And when that happens, uh, it comes down to a little bit of the tactics and fundamentals and what you're going to do on the court. But um, a lot of what gets in the way and a lot of the questions I get from coaches all the time don't even have to do with X's and O's. It's more about uh, creating a leadership um, a platform for your players uh, also how to work with your we are assisting coaches and and have a coaching staff that is uh, kind of creates that good structure for the team and uh, yeah we'll be sharing a lot of uh, things that we've learned and we've also uh, sought out this information uh, over the years and it's crazy to think we've we've, we've been at this uh, with the men's national team for a decade now um, and it's evolved because of our uh, pursuit of continued education right um, we're, the we're very work. much students yeah, we're very much students of the game. Um, you know, this is a, a passion project, of course, for many of us. Uh, you know, we have other jobs, but when it comes to coaching and being around the sport, um, you know, uh, we're weekend warriors most of the time, or, or we get together in the evening and we get focused on how to uh, do the job or the task at hand the best of our abilities. Well, let's and talk about I that. And I thought that, I thought that phrase, continuing education, was so perfect because, you know, I mean, the game – is evolving so much right now. And, and like you said, you know, most people that, that take up basketball, they take their cue from the NBA. They don't necessarily watch NCAAs or they may not watch, you know, uh, the European leagues and everything, but all of this together really yeah. contributes to a game that really right now is positionless basketball and everything. So this is a great primer for coaches of any level to, um, you know, to register, to show up and actually get, you know, uh, get up to speed on what the game is teaching now. Yeah, that's going to be a topic I'm definitely going to uh, address is uh, that phrase of positionless basketball, because I think it gets a little bit confusing sometimes because uh, it's very easy to to define as uh, there are no positions. But I think that's incorrect because there are very much roles and positions that everyone needs to be aware of. However, it's more so the skill set and the and the and the IQ that players should have where although I'm playing the center position, if I have the opportunity to say, uh, you know, uh, pop out to the perimeter perimeter and make a play that maybe a guard would normally have made. Uh, so it doesn't mean that I am no longer playing my position. It's just, I have more flexibility and my skill set allows exactly. me to do more. And then, and then you got to remember on the Island of Guam, especially um, as well as, uh, the region around us, um, the, the traditional or the, the real uh, talent is at the guard position uh, for a majority of the players. I mean, because of size and, and, the, and the manner of which our game is played, it's, it's a very guard oriented uh, game. And you, you've had an interesting roster over the past few years now because you've been able to coach and I'm sure you had to adjust your own coaching philosophy because now you work with, you know, players who are around 6'9", 6'10". Uh, you've dealt with guards who are maybe way about like 220 and everything like that. So yeah, how, how, is, how is it for you to actually work with with that kind of evolving talent and change your own strategy? Well, it, it's, it's very easy to adjust uh, when you have a, a structure and – you can uh, look back to your style of play and make those easy adjustments. Uh, but the fundamentals don't change. Uh, our defensive fundamentals don't change. Our, our playbook may make a little adjustments because we have opportunities to take advantage of matchups or, or strengths of some of our post players. But in terms of uh, how we move the ball, how we shoot the ball from the outside, our guard play even had to elevate their game because now they have uh, better options in terms of pick and roll play. And so I know some of what we uh, we deal with on the men's team, and those are great questions, 
may not um, be the most important thing for youth coaches today. Uh, but we were definitely going to be there to share whatever uh, some coaches would not want, would want to learn. I actually have some registrations already for the clinic. Um, and it was very interesting that they also sent specific items or, or a curriculum that they'd like to talk about. <laughs> so um, I'm, I'm excited to see, hear from coaches that some of them want to learn more about uh, how to improve the leadership on their team while others would like to actually see a sideline or, uh, give me a nice sideline out of bounds play that I can uh, look at running in a last second situation. So it's very different uh, request that I think uh, I'm excited to meet more coaches on Guam and share information. And it's, you know, there's never enough time, uh, but we've broken in, broken the uh, clinic this weekend into two days or two sessions. Uh, Friday evening, uh, we'll have a session from 5.30 to 7 p.m for a level one coach. And that that could even include parents. It's the level one is basically the beginner um, level of basketball where it's either very young youth players or or uh, coaches wanting to really install, um, instill fundamentals in their team, maybe even up to the middle school level. And then level two on Friday night will be 7.30 to nine o'clock uh, where we'll uh, elevate the curriculum a little bit to uh to accommodate for middle school to high school level and more experienced coaches so i really felt that was important jason because i've had a couple of these uh informal coaching clinics and the curriculum is so vast so you'll get a coach that really doesn't want to talk about pick and roll defense and they and and it kind of uh distracts from the the meeting so we're going to separate into two different sessions okay. so that's friday Friday night, level one is five thirty to seven. Level two is seven thirty to nine, and, and there and all these and all clinics are at the University of Guam Cabo Field House. You can't really teach uh, like proper proper spacing when you're trying to run an offense to kids who are still kind of learning how you know get their hand eye coordination just to dribble, right? I, I yeah, absolutely. There's it's going to be very fundamental, but uh, hopefully, uh, it's definitely not going to be boring. I, I think uh, I'm a big. Uh, um, in terms of coaching fundamentals, I coach fundamentals on the men's level. And, and yes, even our very experienced, highly talented uh, players sometimes have to be reminded of the fundamentals of the game and footwork and passing and um, decision making. So it's not fundamental doesn't just mean for uh, a beginner. It just means that you need to reinstill some of the basic skills that you need in the game. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, after Friday night, we're going to come back on Saturday morning and the uh, level one group will be from 830 a.m. to 1130 a.m. Uh, level two will be from 12 noon to 3 p.m. So it's a full day on Saturday. We have more time to spend with each other on Saturday. And I have some uh, players coming to set demonstration, almost get them through a workout. So we'll have a mix of classroom time and on court training. And coaches will be able to um, absolutely get opportunities to ask questions, take notes, um, and see drills happen. And it's and, coaches uh, learning from coaches too, right? Because not only have coaches you been, sharing with coaches, yeah, you're, yeah it's absolutely the coaches is one is one of the amazing rosters that you've been able to assemble with the national team too. So, so talk about some of the people who will be like in your support staff. Yeah, so I, I definitely have uh, coaches that have helped me on the men's team, including uh, Jin Han, uh, Chris Fernandez. Uh, Cy Conception now is uh, working on our with our men's team, uh, all very experienced high school coaches, as well as former national players and and uh, and now national coaches. And uh, we've gone and, and done well in some competitions together. And usually what we do on the side, not only are we scouting for the games we're playing, we just that's a great opportunity for us to share with each other and talk up the game. So what we're going to do in this clinic is uh, break down and share that with others. So. Um, they're definitely going to be there. Um, uh, some of our junior national coaches are also going to be in attendance uh, to not only um, uh, learn also at the clinic and improve uh, some of the things they're working on, but also might share some top topics as well. Okay. So I'm really excited. Uh, it is a free clinic. We're not charging for registration. Uh, what we're asking for as an option is our junior national teams are all fundraising um uh, throughout the summer for their travel. We have uh, junior national teams traveling all the way to Amman, Jordan 
to compete in a FIBA Asia tournament in Jordan. And we have uh, also our U17 teams traveling to Papua New Guinea uh, later this year. So any uh, support and donations to help those teams with their travel costs will be collected and, and, and directed right to them. Uh, we're doing this uh, not only to help them, but also just to improve uh, the, the sport on Guam. So I appreciate you giving us a chance to uh, let the community know about the clinic. And uh, it's, again, May 5th and 6th, Friday and Saturday, uh, Friday evening and Saturday morning. Absolutely. Okay, Coach, before I let you go, I do want to uh, ask about one thing, because one thing that I always have appreciated about the Guam sports community is, you know, uh, we all support each other is, you know, like uh, across like different sports, we we recognize, um, you know, um, great coaching, great players, you know, our ability to compete against each other and for our island, right? So um, even though this is a basketball centric clinic, uh, what if other coaches would like to, uh, you know, from other sports, like you may get a tennis coach or a wrestling coach, want to kind of go there and say, like, you know, what is another philosophy that I can use and bring back to my program, like on a more abstract level? Because I know a lot of people like doing that cross training. I, I definitely am a cross training coach as well. I I, um, I definitely take a lot from my football background. Um, I enjoy watching a lot of other sports and other, other great coaches and other sports. Because you're a point guard and you are also a quarterback. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So I, I, I cross a lot of uh, analogies, a lot of coaching tips, but um, um, I would definitely uh, say that it would be beneficial if anyone uh, that wants to just pick up some information about coaching in general. Mm -hmm. I know that we will be talking about building a team culture, about uh, values and objectives of our program. Uh, we've been doing more sports psychology training with our uh, with our national program. So uh, I'll share a little bit about how we work to improve our mental toughness and, uh, and leadership. So uh, before we get into a lot of the technical nuances of the man to man defense or, or um, our transition offense, we will also be covering things that I think coaches would enjoy uh, regardless of what sport they play. Or what yeah, sport because, they play. because coach, coaching is an art. I mean, it's teaching, it's philosophical, it's motivational, it's managerial. I mean, it, it's all these different skills that you need. I mean, it's, it's not for everybody. I mean, a lot and of it's changing. It's, it's exactly. always, it's ever changing. Yeah. You have to be flexible and uh, you can't always say, uh, you know, you can have your, your basic uh, foundation, but if you're not flexible, things change around you. Your team often changes. And if you're stuck to your way of doing things, I think you're going to have a, a tough time uh, in the long run. I think you have to look at every team as a as a new opportunity to uh, uh, either take build on strengths of the past that you that they that they can harness, or or uh, look at being um, a different team and a different unit. Well, and as an illustration of that, before I let you go, because I was talking to a uh, two-time Olympian uh, Chris Duenas, you know, like the swim coach yeah. now, and he said yeah. that Chris actually said that he really recommends his swimmers, and he goes, yeah you should also go play tennis, you know, go play basketball because he goes, I just need you to understand that there are different mentalities of being, of knowing how to compete and knowing about preparation and execution and everything that you can definitely take back to our sport and you, you that you can apply in the pool. And he goes, he, he goes, I'm absolutely an advocate of uh, the cross training mentality. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm excited. I hope we uh, hope to see a lot of uh, uh, aspiring coaches as well as experienced coaches uh, I'm happy to see some initial registrations of uh, because you don't have to register. You can just show up, by the way. Uh, but some are sending emails just letting us know I'm interested in this uh, in this time slot or this time slot. And they're asking questions. And I was excited to see some very experienced coaches that uh, I enjoy watching their teams play. Um, but they're also showing me that they're hungry for more knowledge uh, like I am. So we're going to be able to work on uh, and have a good clinic this weekend. There you go. And that email address, everybody, is basketballguam at gmail.com. If you have any questions for Coach Calvo or any of his staff over there, they are the, they are the very best of the best on our island. And, and if you want to be the best, you got to learn from the best. And, uh, Coach, it's amazing that you're uh, making this opportunity available to people, again, whose, uh, whose calling is the profession that you've undertaken. So thank you very much. Yeah, thank you, Jason, for the time and look forward to seeing everyone. Thanks All again. Right. KUAM Sports is brought to you by Docomo Pacific. Better together.